Scale Apache Tomcat deployments. Good afternoon, folks. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, large scale deployments using Apache Tomcat. Um, a little bit about myself. I am Indika Kotakadenia. Yes, the last name is pretty long, but if you take it two letters at a time, it's pretty easy to pronounce. Uh, I'm a senior developer at Open Software Integrators. We are based in Durham, North Carolina. So uh, OSI provides consulting services to large vendors in the open source realm, like say Red Hat, uh, Spring Source. Um, just two examples. Uh, as a developer, I have over 10 years of experience, uh, primarily with Java, but I started off doing C and C++, did a little bit of Perl and PHP. I consider myself a jack of some trades and master of none. <laughs> so, uh, you know, these days, some people like to consider themselves experts, uh, but I think it's a loaded term, so I would like to stay away from that as much as possible. Um, so apart from the technology stuff, uh, at least just to keep a little bit of sanity, I like to play cricket. That's not catching crickets with a net. That's a British sport. And tennis. Uh, so enough about me. Let's move on. So here are the list of topics that we are going to cover. Uh, and uh, just going to progress through each one of them. So let's start with uh, a brief introduction to Tomcat. This is the global 60,000 foot view. Uh, so Tomcat is an open source servlet co container, as most of you may know. It is very popular, um, and it has been around for quite some time. It started off as a reference implementation by Sun Microsystems, now Oracle. And it's a, a pure Java HTTP server environment for code to run. So these days you may even have some people who run uh, things like uh, Clojure, et cetera, on the JVM. Um, and it is also embedded in many of the popular application servers. JBoss comes to mind. There's also WebSphere. And uh, now it's an Apache top-level project. Um, and uh, so um, it is also a community effort where um, there are core developers from various companies like Spring so Source and JBoss. Uh, so each uh, or each of those individuals or some of them uh, lead um, the project, and I have had the pleasure, so to speak, uh, working with some of them, uh, especially developing some uh, uh, training material for uh, Spring Source. So let's uh, talk about what an actual large scale deployment is. Uh, so look at this scenario where we have three Tomcat instances running. Uh, fronted by Apache acting as a load balancer. Uh, I would obviously say this is not a large-scale deployment. This would probably be your typical uh, QA or staging environment where you have a few instances running that uh, help you test or help business users test and make sure that uh, things are uh, running as planned before you make a, a migration to production. So how about this configuration where we have about 15 instances running? I would say this would qualify as a large-scale deployment. So in most cases, you have a pretty um, homogeneous environment where you may be running this on something like a um, back-end Red Hat servers, uh, and each of these uh, instances may host just one application is most of the time you don't want to have a Tomcat instances, instance and have three or four applications running on it, mainly because if one is buggy, it's going to bring everything down. So it's the classic bad Apple scenario where you want to isolate certain things. 
So moving on, uh, let's introduce some of the concepts uh, important to uh, large-scale deployments, one of which is Catalina Home. Um, so let's first look at a typical Tomcat installation. So if I were to download, say, Apache Tomcat 6035 from uh, uh, their website, um, I typically install it on ASA local, but people generally install it on slash opt or various places. You might even install it in your home directory, which is good for testing purposes, but if you're trying to actually build a dev environment or staging environment, you, want, you don't want to put stuff in your personal home directory. So um, if I, assuming I exploded this on ASA local, we would have an ASA local Apache Tomcat 6035 directory. And underneath it, we have bin, conf, lib, log, stamp, web apps, and work directories. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Tomcat would know bin has uh, all the startup scripts. Conf has some of the configuration files. Uh, lib has some uh, commonly used uh, jar files, etc. Logs is where you would, once Tomcat starts, uh, is where you would see the log, uh, logs, uh, folders, and such. Uh, it, depending on the configuration, you might have one, you might have two, you might have multiples. Temp directory is where it uh, does, uh, stores files for its temporary work, and web apps is where you will likely install your application. So if you have an application called mycompany.war, that is where you would put it, and it would automatically explode it, and then you would say HTTP mycompany.com slash mycompany, uh, and that would get you to the uh, application. So uh, since we are on the topic of Catalina Home, um, so Catalina Home is the installation path of Tomcat. In this case, it's as a local Apache Tomcat 6035. Um, so Catalina Home can be shared upon uh, amongst multiple base instances. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, because some of these concepts are kind of uh, hard to talk about, uh, especially on a presentation like this where I don't know uh, what to assume. <laughs> you guys might know Tomcat in, inside out. You might not. So it's kind of like shooting that's in the dark here. All right, so most of the times a picture does uh, the work of thousands and thousands of words. So here's an instance uh, where we are showing you Catalina Home. Uh, again, as a reminder, it's installed in ASA local Apache Tomcat 6035. And we could have base instances which point to that Tomcat Home. Uh, I will explain what each of these means uh, as we go along. So let's talk about Catalina Base. Uh, so it, A, it relies on Catalina Home, uh, and it can contain instance-specific files. Instance-specific as in you may have three or four Tomcat instances. So for instance one, instance two, and instance three, etc., you would have certain files applicable uh, residing there. Uh, what do these instances contain? Uh, I'll get to that as well. Uh, what consists the base? And we, we, we've touched upon that a little bit. So let me answer those questions as we go along. So uh, generally speaking, uh, the default installation um, uh, make uh, Catalina Home, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. So in the inst uh, instance of a default installation, Catalina Home and Catalina Base point to the same thing. So ASA local Tomcat 6035, in our case, Apache Tomcat 6035. So this is not ideal for large-scale deployments because it is a base, base install. You've just downloaded uh, Tomcat. You've exploded it. You haven't done anything with it. So, you know, fine and dandy for you to get something up and running quickly, but we are talking about 50, 60 um, instances. So you want to do some tweaking. Uh, so 
when I said this is not ideal for large-scale deployments, one question you should ask uh, yourself is, is this a true statement? So let's try to go about proving whether this statement is true or false. So in our case, we are going to assume, uh, let's say your boss has given you an assignment, said, hey, I want you to spin up uh, 20 Tomcat instances. Um, you have 10 VMs to do this, and I want two instances on each of the VMs. Um, obviously, you have to start somewhere. So generally speaking, you would start fairly small. So let's start with one uh, VM and one instance. And once we've figured that out, we can extrapolate to our 20 instances. Um, so again, oh, let's just, uh, examine the layout. We are going to have a directory called uh, Tomcat X dash default, uh, pardon my naming, under us a local. And inside there, we are going to have a JDK installation. In this case, JDK is 1.6.027 and Apache Tomcat 6.0.35. So now we are going to create our two instances. Remember, we, we are ta still talking about our default layout. So what we are going to do is try to hack this out. Um, Remember, we live in an imperfect world, so sometimes we don't have perfect solutions. So if, if you had to get something working first, and then you refine it, um, and then you have something that you can scale with. Uh, it's important as engineers, as people who provide solutions, uh, not to talk too much theory because you can turn your boss off. He or she might say, well, so-and-so is great. They know a lot about Tomcat, Java, what, whatever else, but I, don't, I didn't want a lecture on Tomcat theory or Java theory. I want something done. So that's, that's the goal, right? So we're, we're going to try to get something done. It's not going to be elegant, but we want a solution. And once we get there, we'll refine it. So we're first going to start off by copying Apache Tomcat uh, 6035 uh, into Apache Tomcat. Uh, 6035 instance 1 and instance 2. So the question now is, are we done? Uh, what about things like Java Home? What about ports that these two instances will start on? So let's answer those questions. So how do we set Java Home? Where do we set it? Um, for this exercise, I didn't want to go into too much theory, so uh, I would I decided to take the easy way out and edit the bash profile or dot profile if you're on uh, a Debian variant. Um, again, I am assuming that most of you guys are comfortable on Linux and uh, I did not want to go into the whole Windowsy world, uh, though, you know, obviously Tomcat can run on Windows. Uh, so pardon my bias against Windows. So here's an example of uh, a dot bash profile or dot profile. It's fairly straightforward. You set up your Java home. In our case, it would be as a local Tomcat X default, a JDK 16027. And then I, I like to do it this way. This is a very personal preference, so you're welcome to disagree with it. I have run into a lot of situations where there are multiple JDK installations or multiple JREs. And if you don't put Java Home at the beginning of your path, you don't know what you're going to get. So since you don't control the environment, uh, you control what you can. So Java Home goes first in the path. And uh, once you say, once you say this and say source uh, space dot uh, bash profile, it should set your Java Home and path. So now we have Java Home set. Let's tackle the ports. So we are going to assume that instance one is going to run on port 8081 and instance two on port 8082. Uh, just as an FYI, uh, if you go with the default install, it always starts up on port 8080. Um, so if you are running two instances, you need to change the instance of the second port. So 
uh, I said, well, you know, since we are going through an exercise, let's show them something a little bit different uh, so that everybody has their thinking caps on. So in, in order to uh, change the ports that it's running on, we have to edit the server.xml that is located in uh, the conf directory. So in this instance, instance one slash conf slash server XML. Um, and note that we are also uh, employing Catalina properties instead of hard coding values. So in, in reality, instead of that dollar shutdown port, you could have 8081, oh sorry, 8086, instead of connector port uh, having dollar HTTP port, you could have 8081. However, it works, but if you have to constantly keep touching the server XML file, odds are you're gonna make an error. So it's better that you touch a properties file than a server XML file. So mm, tricks of the trade, so to speak. And you've, you, I'm sure you guys have programmed, so uh, you've picked up some tricks over the years. So you don't keep making elementary mistakes. So uh, notice that HTTP port here in Catalina properties is 8081. So here's the same example uh, for instance two. Notice that the only thing that changes are the shutdown ports and the HTTP ports. Again, this is an example. There are many other ports like AJP, so forth, but for the purpose of this exercise, I didn't want to go into all of those things. And also, I have a limited amount of time. All right, so let's start both the instances. Um, you basically change, uh, open up a, a terminal window, change over to us a local Tomcat X default, and then you say Apache Tomcat 6035 instance one, Catalina SH start, Catalina instance two, Catalina SH start. So that'll start one on 8081 and one on 8082. So notice that we've just only tackled one of our VMs. We have to do this on nine other instances. So you can obviously do this by hand, or if you are smart, you can probably cook up some script that does SCPs to the nine others and at least explodes these things in a certain way so you can go and edit some, some of these configuration files. So uh, we did make a pretty strong statement that um, the default layout is not ideal for large-scale deployments, so you might have gotten a f feel as to why. So a lot of uh, configuration files are duplicated, so are log files. There's also copying and pasting involved, and uh, editing configuration files like server XML, etc. These can lead to errors. And one other important thing is there's no centralized start stop script. So each time you want to s start a Tomcat instance, you had to change to that instance one directory uh, or its root directory and say instance one slash bin slash Kathleen I said start, Kathleen I said stop, so forth. So unless you have a tool, and there are many of them out there that lets you start stop remotely from, say, a web console or something, you'd have to SSH into this and do it manually, which can be fairly tedious as well. So uh, notice I haven't even talked about any JDK or Tomcat migrations here. So just this exercise for two instances involves quite a bit of work. Uh, so extrapolate that into 20, extrapolate that into 50, and you can very easily see that this is, although a solution, it's not real, a really good solution. So then what, what else is out there? So let's talk about the real solution, which is the shared layout. So earlier we said that the single copy of Tomcat uh, home can be shared on multiple instances. Um, so the home uh, install holds common libs and configurations, and the instances contain uh, files that are specific to it. Um, so if you, if you go back, 
the server XML remained the same between instance one and instance two. The only thing that changed was the ports, and that we got around that by specifying stuff in Catalina properties. Um, so, so that was one thing. So we'll dig in further and, and see what else makes life easier for us. So we talked about Catalina Home and Catalina Base, but never talked about where they are set, how they are set. Um, so let's talk about that. So all the startup scripts for Apache Tomcat is in the bin directory. And there are many ways of starting up Tomcat. One way is to call the startup script. I personally like to use Catalina SH instead. But that's just a personal choice. So if you take startup, it'll call Catalina SH, which in turn will call set class path SH and set ENV SH, and then the JVM launches. So set ENV SH is not something that comes with Tomcat. It's something that you have to create manually. So again, you create this in your uh, bin folder. And it, it, it is a very handy thing to have, and we'll see how handy it is. So speaking of configuration, we can also specify Java Home, Java Ops, Catalina Ops, et cetera, uh, in, um, inside here as well, inside our scripts. And if you've examined any of the Tomcat st start stop scripts, you've probably seen many, many references to those in there. So these can be set as environment variables as well. I would say that it's a definite no-no. Um, I personally like to set Java Home myself. That is because I like to control it. But if you go about setting Catalina Ops, so forth, Catalina, especially Catalina Home, Catalina Base, as environment variables, and you move on, Patrick here comes in and is the next guy who has to uh, go through the fire. Uh, he may be more familiar with doing things the standard way. So now, you know, he says, but why is this thing bombing? Because, you know, I've set, set everything up the standard way. And then 20 minutes later or an hour later, he realizes, oh, uh, that genius Indica, he set up uh, uh, Catalina Home and Catalina Base as environment variable. And I'm sure he'll be saying very complimentary things about me. Um, as the days go along. So I, I stay away from those. Um, even Java Home, you can set up inside set PNB set, and we'll talk about that. Uh, so if no values exist for these things, Java Home, Java Ops, et cetera, uh, they'll default. So in our case, if we don't set Catalina Home uh, or Catalina Base, they'll default to us a local um, Apache Tomcat 6035, right? So. Let's tie everything together. So here's uh, our JDK uh, 16027 inside Tomcat's X shared directory. And we have a Apache Tomcat uh, install. And then we have an instance of that as well. So notice that Catalina Home here is pointing to our Tomcat installation, which is Apache Tomcat 6035. Catalina Base is pointing to the instance, and Java Home is pointing to the JDK instance, and the Catalina PID file is going off of base. So it, it'll be created in instance one slash logs uh, Tomcat slash Tomcat PID. So we talked about set ENB, and this gives us the ability to customize customize each instance. So let's look at how we use this uh, for the second instance. So notice that now um, only thing that's changed in the code snippet up top is instance two is introduced. So here's down below, here's our instance two set ENVSH. Only thing that's changed there is Catalina Base is pointing to instance two instead of instance one. So 
extrapolate to instance three, instance four, et cetera. This is a very easy way of setting things. It's instance specific. It's in, instances are independent of each other. Um, and if should you want to experiment and maybe tr try one specific instance with a different uh, JDK version, you can do that without affecting any of the others. So I talked about instance one and instance two, never really talked about how we created, create those instances, uh, especially with regard to the shared layout. Um, so the way we go about that is by uh, creating a skeleton. So if you are uh, used to Unix and Linux and you've created users before, there's a, in the Etsy directory, there's a scale. So it's like that, right? So you, you have some, a basic layout set, set up and as you create instances, all you do is copy instance one skeleton to instance one, uh, sorry, instance skeleton to instance one, instance two, et cetera. And in this case, uh, notice we have a control script. Uh, it's called run.sh. So that is what we will use to centrally start, stop, uh, start and stop instances. And we have a shared directory. And I will dive more into that as we go along. So in this case, our Catalina home is our Apache Tomcat instance. And in our shared directory, we have uh, configuration files such as login properties, server XML, Tomcat, Tomcat users XML, etc. Um, you may remember I said, especially with regard to our default install, the only thing that changed in the server XML were the ports. So in this case, we are assuming that these are all um, homogeneous installations in the sense of we are deploying the same app over and over and over again in different instances. So therefore, server XML really doesn't change. So it's, it makes sense to have it in a centralized place. So again, configuration files can be defined at the instance level. And uh, there can be certain files that are instance specific, set ENBSH and Catalina properties are examples. So now our instance one is going to look very different from our brute force method of copying um, something we downloaded from uh, Tomcat, copied over to instance one, in, instance two. It does not have all those configuration files. It's very, very, very basic. It, it's, it's a skeleton at this point. So there's no duplication of configuration files, um, unnecessary uh, jar files, etc. So important note here is when Catalina base is defined, Tomcat prioritizes Catalina base uh, for the following directories, conf, log, share, temp, web apps, and work. This is how we are able to centralize configuration files and keep things that are instance specific to those, uh, those particular uh, instances. So server.xml is not required at the instance level. And uh, so every instance can inherit this. Uh, so as we have seen, few properties can change from one instance to the other, HTTP port, shutdown port, AJP port, etc. cetera. Uh, so those can go in uh, ca the Catalina properties files. And a shared XML file is commonly used when the same application is running on multiple instances, and I touched upon that earlier. So let's talk about the logging.properties file. Again, this is where you will see things like Catalina out. Um, so by default, we should put this at the shared configuration level. So our run.sh, sorry for the bad reference there, uh, only reads the file at the shared level. So at runtime, each instance gets its own log files. So here's an example of our logging properties file. So notice there's a reference to Catalina base um, and Catalina instance. So each one of them 
is going to get its own set of log files, like it is uh, the standard practice. Oops, sorry. So let's compare default and shared layout very briefly. So at the risk of sounding like a broken record, um, if you use the default layout, it can be very tedious and error prone. Uh, so if, if you want to handle 20, 30, 40, 50 Tomcat instances, you should uh, use the sh uh, shared layout and write a custom run.sh. And this is actually not a very hard exercise. I mean, I myself figured this out uh, and trying to write some training material for Spring Source. Um, and you can look at existing files, uh, Catalina SH, uh, which will give you some good ideas. And if one of you is interested, uh, I can send you an example around SH. Um, so let me know. Uh, I have no problem sharing that. Um, just as a side note, so, uh, so all this is like a homegrown solution, right? So it's like saying, oh, I am good enough as a coder, I'm going to write my own connection pool. So yeah, sure, it's good to show off, but is it a wise choice in the sense of uh, you are not really going to maintain the code base over years, uh, and there are going to be new feature requests, and you're just one person, and you're not going to be able to keep up with that. So again, he, so this is the limitation here as well. If you go with your own custom install, uh, or custom script, and you don't had, have it documented well enough, and you move on, you know, we may run into problems. Uh, a, because it's n not documented. B, because it's a custom thing. So there are enterprise solutions, so to speak. Um, Tomcat, uh, uh, Spring Sources, TC Server is such uh, an example. It's actually called Enterprise Tomcat. And they, what they do is, um, <laughs> You know, they'll sell you Tomcat, but any bugs, features they fix in TC server will be migrated to Tomcat as well. So that comes with all these things that uh, uh, it comes with uh, large scale deployments enabled off, off the shelf. So all you have to do is create your instances one by one, and all you, all you can automate it. Um, so there are solutions out there for those who are interested. So let's talk about JK migration. How can we pull this off? This is not an esoteric concept. Um, uh, Oracle is always pushing out newer versions of the JDK. So you might be on JDK 1.6 for a while, and you might run into some sort of issue with uh, some feature, and they'll fix it, and they'll roll out a new version. So you want to get that. So at that point, your boss says, hey, uh, we should have we should migrate to JDK 1.6 or 0 0.30 or even JDK 7. So how do we handle this? Uh, so with earlier I went about setting Java Home in our dot profile, uh, and as you saw, that wasn't really necessary. We could have done it using uh, the set ENVSH as shown here. So let's, for example, say we are going to migrate to 1.6.030. So all you do there is bring that in and uh, have that expanded under as a local Tomcat X default. So everything else remains the same. So now how do we migrate it? We simply change the set env of a given instance. So that's all you have to do. You stop, stop that instance, edit the set env as such, start it up, and you're all set. That was pretty easy. So same thing for um, the second instance, third instance, so forth. So we merely point uh, Java Home to the new JDK instance, and we are done. So this process is identical for the shared layout as well. So we always have to worry about 
uh, what if something goes wrong? I'm sure those of you who've been around a while has experienced this. You think, okay, migration is only going to take 15 minutes. And three hours later, uh, oh yeah, that was fun. So you have to be able to downgrade, right? So rule of thumb is uh, you don't um, delete anything. You have your old uh, JDK version around, and hey, it doesn't work, your app doesn't work with the new um, JDK instance, you roll back. So let's talk about migrating Tomcat. So again, we have to be able to roll back if something goes wrong. And it's very easy these days to keep multiple installations. It's not like uh, hard disk space is expensive as it used to be. So here's how you do it with uh, the default layout. Right? Notice Catalina Home and Catalina Base are the same. So instance specific conf files that you have updated should be copied manually. So it's hard to keep track. So here, here's how we pull it. Look at before and look at after. So we are keeping all of the previous uh, instances. And we have our new Tomcat 7026 instance 1 and instance 2 there. If something were to go wrong, we can revert back within minutes or seconds. So this is easier with uh, the shared layout. Instances don't have to be updated. Only thing that you have to update is um, bringing in um, our um, new Tomcat 6 or, uh, 7026. And we back up uh, 6035 as were the case. So in this case, we don't touch it as, at all. So uh, since we have a centralized uh, run.sh, only thing we do is change uh, Catalina home to point to Tomcat 7026 instead of Tomcat 6035. So in summary, uh, Tomcat provides fle flexibility for large-scale deployments. It's not automatically provided, so you have to uh, build your own customized scripts, which shouldn't be that hard, and it's very easy to migrate JDKs and Tomcat uh, versions. Um, and you can have several version installs concurrently, so this way you can upgrade, downgrade, as necessary. Uh, any questions, comments, sarcastic remarks, editorial comments? How do you like that particular uh, version of a cat? Do you prefer the one that has the uh, Tomcat um, IBM Web Sphere? IBM Web Sphere. So Tomcat is very lightweight, right? It doesn't, you know, for off the shelf come with JMS, um, all these other, other uh, things that you may or may not need in an enterprise environment. So it's very stripped down. Uh, if you want to add that functionality for web services, JMS, all that, you have to bring the, that in. So things like DevOps and WebSphere will uh, provide that off the shelf. And then EJB support, all that is built into the uh, WebSphere stack, not necessarily uh, for Tomcat. And, Again, a lot of people uh, have gone away from EJBs, and with Spring, as you know, configuration is easier. So uh, that stack fits really well with the Tomcat, right? So if you're going very lightweight um, without certain components, uh, then yes, you should definitely look at Tomcat. But if you have some of the legacy stuff, you shouldn't be very, that quick to say, oh, Tomcat looks great, let's go to Tomcat. You, you don't know what, what will break. And besides, you, uh, you know, there'll, there'll need to be a rewrite of your stuff. Because we're uh, using the ATG platform. Yes. Yeah, so ATG is a behemoth on its own. Uh, as you know, uh, I actually, I was several weeks ago um, trying to help out uh, 
uh, a client with a, a JBoss specific uh, issue um, and they were running ATG. So it's kind of a black box. So uh, most of those uh, platforms I don't think work f well with uh, Tomcat. Uh, at least I'm not aware of some of them even providing support for Tomcat. Uh, ATG, f for a while there was very tied to JBoss, but I've heard rumblings that they're kind of trying to get away from that uh, as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes. Yeah, so I, I would say use Tomcat for lightweight applications and stick to JBoss, WebSphere, what have you for the heavier stuff, especially if you're using a, a framework like ATG, because that has certain tie-ins tie to s uh, specific containers. So again, you know, we, we don't live in a perfect world, and I don't think the creators of Tomcat uh, necessarily want to say we solve all your problems. We solve some of your problems, and in most instances, that may be good enough. Not with the clients we uh, have dealt with. Uh, most of them, again, remember that uh, sometimes when we go in, we go in as uh, the vendor, right. in spring source. So in that case, we, even though I might want to tell you, hey, you know, I might want to use Jetty, I theoretically can't, right? I mean, I, I have to say, hey, Tomcat is still good enough for what you want to do. Uh, but I think Jetty is definitely uh, picking up in po popularity. You may even have noticed, right, um, with Spring, I don't know whether you uh, uh, do any Spring stuff, but like with Spring continuous integration, uh, they use Jetty underneath. Uh, so when you fire up your SDS instance and you're testing, that's what it does. It's for, fires up uh, Jetty underneath so you can do your stubs, mocks, et cetera. Um, but uh, do I have an opinion on that? Not necessarily. I would say whatever helps you solve the problem, you should use and you should not you know, be overly swayed by somebody saying, oh, Tomcat is better, or JBoss is better, or WebSphere is better. Uh, if your current tool does the job and it seems to be doing the job for the foreseeable future, you should stick with it. Now, if you are introducing certain um, new features that require, um, say, queues, uh, enterprise integration, so forth, then you might have to look at a different implementation. But uh, again, these days with Spring integration, you know, you you have a pr fairly proficient, lightweight uh, ESB, and there's, there's Apache Camel, so you don't really have to go to a very heavyweight solution like JBoss. And, uh, another follow-up. When we set up a large number of instances on a single node, is that mostly just to handle several concurrent requests, or are you talking about, like, isolated environments for security purposes, or what are the um, so if you are running, let's say, on a given instance, you are running, given VM, you are running five Tomcat instances. Um, it's, it, it is to spread the load so you can handle more con uh, concurrent users. It is also in one sense to isolate, right? So you are now running one, one web app on each of these instances and then in most cases, especially with large-scale uh, deployments, you're talking about the same application. So you have a front-end load balancer. It could be Apache, or it could be a combination of a hardware load balancer and Apache. And you tie it into Tomcat with a connector like mod JK or mod proxy. Um, and so this way, 
right? Especially if you download testing and you know, given the resources, uh, you know, your Tomcat instances, instance can take, say, 500 concurrent users. So now you know your traffic is grown by fourfold, so you have to keep adding Tomcat instances and expand. Uh, generally, you expand horizontally, not vertically, uh, because uh, um, you know, VM, uh, most places I've seen, you know, VM is given a certain amount of resources, and if you run multiple Tomcats on a given VM, you also have to worry about how many physical cores are available to that VM, because garbage collection takes threads as well. So general practice is um, your garbage collection threads should not exceed the amount of physical cores, right? So since you had to worry about all these things, subtleties, it's better to isolate them and just grow horizontally as opposed to vertically by adding more RAM, more processors, etc. But it all depends on what your infrastructure looks like right now. If you are on physical boxes, odds are you you'll probably add more RAM um, as opposed to growing the other way. And these days, most people are on the cloud or they have uh, VMs. Yeah, it was actually, that was going to be my next question. Is, do you, are there any specific considerations to large-scale Tomcat deployments in the cloud? Do you Uh, the cloud, so it it is a marketing term as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so I mean, you know, from a from an administrative standpoint, I can understand it. So I don't have to worry about my physical hardware. I don't maybe not necessarily have to worry about employing a good system admin or few of them. So I push it out to Amazon. Um, yes, from that point, I can understand it. But from the standpoint of getting certain things done, uh, like, oh, I have to open up a new fi uh, firewall uh, or new port in a firewall, those things I think you can do more effectively if you use a local provider or your own, right? And I, this, this is my philosophy. I say, well, if I can go to the lo local comp USA and buy a computer, I'd rather do that than buying online because if something goes wrong, I can go and return it <laughs> or, or bitch to them and they're likely to you know, take me more seriously. Same thing if you have your um, uh, uh, solution provider here, like data center solution provider here. It's just a matter of driving over there. So, you know, it's still a cluster, right? So there's still stuff going on. All you have done is moved it from your servers to their servers. So to me, mm, I don't know. If I were a CTO, I'd be fairly hesitant. But then I'm not a CTO, so. Any other questions? Oh. 